Fleming Sword Global Christian Assembly is the African division of Fleming Sword Ministries UK. Established in 2015 in Adoregeti, we have been mandated to deliver God's people from the oppression of false prophets and teachers and to demonstrate God's acceptable model for ministry. We have now been led to establish God's city assembly in Adoregeti. Connect with the grace of God upon this ministry and your experiences in Christ will never be the same again. Your power remains the same. Yes, you never stay. Welcome to Wisdom for Today, Reverend Matthew Akinjide Daniel Ministry. Hello everyone and welcome to the second installment of Wisdom for Today. I'm your brother, Reverend Matthew Akinjide Daniel, welcoming you. Last week we started to uh, examine our new theme for this month, which is Jesus is coming soon. Thank you, somebody who corrected me. We don't have five Saturdays in this month. I'm mixing it up with five Sundays because, you know, when we're planning the preaching in church, I plan for five Sundays. And then I found out that no, it doesn't correspond with the Saturday, which is my mistake. So we've only got four Saturdays this month because the last Saturday was the 31st. Anyway, so that means we'll be merging two of those two things I told you. We'll be fusing them together. That means we'll be fusing number three and number four together. Why should he come back and what are the signs of his hand? Those signs of the end times we we'll try and match those two together as best as we can so that we don't lose anything but at least so that you may gain as well but today we want to look at prophecies about his coming you know we're not talking about his first coming that one was also highly predicted or prophesied over thousands of years but we want to look at what are the prophecies about his second coming please don't get it mixed up you know the first coming is from genesis chapter 3 verse 15 all the way to malachi chapter 3 jesus's birth and everything was predicted but we're looking at the prophecies concerning his second coming we also want everyone to know that his coming has been predicted all the way from old testament to the new testament and the fact that all those prophecies have almost been fulfilled except one and those ones that have not been fulfilled they will soon be fulfilled as well so that goes without saying at all i'm persuaded so the prophecies are always very important especially when it's from the scripture because it gives us confidence because we know that that's god that has put that there or has inspired the people to prophesy and god who has inspired those people knows he's going to bring it to pass so one of the first prophecy was what we read last week from the book of john chapter 14 verses 1 to 3 the book of john chapter 14 verses 1 to 3 and it says let not your heart be troubled believe in god believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if you were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself that where i am there you may be also so jesus the first prophecy came from what what jesus said that i'm going to come back again to get you guys you and i even long before jesus was born he was being referred to in the book of zechariah in the book of zechariah chapter 14 verse 5 zechariah 14 5 says then you shall flee through my mountain valley for the mountain valley shall reach to azar yes you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzzah, king of judah does the lord my god will come and all the saints with you you see that last statement is how you know that it's not talking about the first coming it's talking about the second coming he said the lord my god will come and all the saints with you because he said when he comes every eye shall see him and then the saints will rise up and go up there and join with him and then he will reign with them and then he will come back after a thousand years anyway don't they just get ahead of herself but it was also prophesied in Zechariah. When you have time, read the book of Zechariah. I think it should be what? Maybe about 14 chapters or something. And there are lots of loaded prophecies, especially concerning the end there. Now, in Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 to 29, Matthew chapter 24 is a chapter that is loaded with the things concerning the end times. So it's one of those places you want to be reading to refresh your mind and to be prepared for a second coming. So in Matthew 24, 36 to 39, it says, But of that day and hour, no one knows. I don't know all these people that are always trying to give accurate date or specific year. The Bible says no one knows. You, you will have an idea of the end, but no one knows 
of that day and hour. No one. So you can say, oh, hopefully maybe in the next 20 or 30 years, I won't be surprised. Or maybe next 40 or 50 years, I won't be surprised. But you can't say, oh, and it's going to be year 2025. or year 20. Once you start to go specific, you are, you are crossing the scripture now. Because the scripture says, nobody knows. You know, he said, only my father knows. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, by drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. And did not know until the flood came and took them all the way. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. I was referring to this scripture last week. Uh, Matthew 24, 36 to 39. It's very important for us to know that it will creep up on all of us. It's not something that, oh, I think it may be this coming week. Oh, maybe this. No, we will have an idea of this time and this season. Like uh, we know now for some time that we are living in the end times. But nobody knows specifically when Jesus will be coming. And that is why it's very important for us to be ready. It is very, very important for us to be ready because nobody knows when he's coming back. And when he comes, he's coming to give reward to everybody according to their works shall be. So make sure that he meets you in the right place. Make sure that he meets you in the right place. Amen. I could remember those days when uh, I was still living in sin before God rescued me. Sometimes I'll go to bed and then I'll wake up the next morning and I'll be so happy Jesus had not come. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know some people may find this funny, but there are some people out there that can relate to what I'm saying here. You know when you are living in deep sin, this one is not a pretend sin. No, you are living in deep sin and you believe in Jesus. You know that in your somewhere at the back of your heart, you'll be thinking, Omo, come on, kakini, mommy, love. You know, so those days after maybe I've gone drinking and gotten drunk or I've done other stupid stuff and brought somebody home or whatever. By the time I wake up, I woke up the next day, I'll be so happy. <laughs> oh, well, Jesus has not come here because if he had come at any point in time, there I'm not even going to wait for him to judge me. I just say, Daddy, you know where you want to send me now. Let us bypass all this judgment area. Let just send me to where you know say I've, I should go to. I know it's sounding funny, but that was a section in my life. That was a realistic section in my life, and and I just thank God for His mercy that I was not caught up in that to the point that it was getting too late for me. I'm so grateful to God for that. So Luke 21, 34 to 36, it says, But take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. We have been told what it is we should be doing. We have been told what it is we should be very careful about. We have to be careful. We say, take heed. Be careful. Take heed. It's warning you be forewarned. Lest your heart be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, cares of this life. And that day will just creep up on you unexpectedly. So we must be very, very careful. All this lifestyle, let me just quickly go and do this. Let me talk, what of if you run out of quickly? What are you going to do? So I'm talking to somebody listening to me. It is never too late for you to ask God to set you free from whatever that may have held you captive. In the days of your power, your people shall be willing. Yeah, yeah. Your young men shall see vision. Your daughter shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams for power to be stronger.
one of the biggest lies that the devil tells people is that whatever their fault or weakness is, he tries to convince them that they can never get over it. And it's a lie from the pit of hell. He just, you know, gives that impression like you can never get here. This thing is, you know, is in your blood or whatever. He just sell you a one lie or the other. Somebody listening to me, do not believe this. Do not believe this. There is no hole you have sunken into that God cannot retrieve you from. There is no depth that you may have sunken into that God cannot reach out to you and pull you out. I'm a living, breathing testimony. All my friends are still around. People know me. My family, some of my family members are still in Nigeria. So I can't make, if I was making this up, somebody would have said, oh, you know, GD, shut up. It's a lie. Some people up till now, they're still stunned that people like me made it into the kingdom. Ah, the Kpanyon. But just because we commit sin, reach one stage, they're like, all my colleagues, they've used their mouth to send me to airfire. I said, thank God Jesus did not send me to airfire. And he doesn't want to send you to airfire, whoever may be listening to this program. He doesn't want to send you to airfire. Hell was designed for Satan. In the olden days, when knowledge, there wasn't much knowledge, they're always trying to threaten us with hellfire, hellfire, hellfire. Hell was originally designed only for Satan and his fallen angels. That was why God designed hell. But unfortunately, because of the free will of human beings, some people will choose to end up in that hell. May that not be you in the name of Jesus. May not may that not be you in the name of Jesus. So it is very important for us to know what it is we are supposed to be doing. And that is to make sure that we keep ourselves we're watching we're following all the commands of jesus and everything he has told us to do and we're making sure that we're doing that so that we are not caught on our ways it's very important that we're not caught on our ways it's essential in john chapter 6 verses 39 to 40 john chapter 6 verses 39 to 40 says this is the will of the father who sent me that all he has given me i should lose nothing but she will raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. God desires for nobody to be lost. Nobody. You know, some people think, oh, all of this is divided, or some people have already made it. Uh, there are some people that may. No. People will only be on whatever side of the counter, depending on their free will. I'm not saying it's easy, but there's no way God will just say, oh, I've created this person to go to hellfire. No, it is that person that will still choose hellfire by themselves, by their own free will. So, we know the will of the Father. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 4, Colossians chapter 3 verse 4, it says, When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. When Christ, Colossians chapter 3 verse 4, who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Ah, Father Lord, may this be my portion. May it be the portion of those listening to me right now in the name of Jesus. That when Jesus comes, we will also appear with him in glory. In the name of Jesus. Ah, I'm, that, that, is, that really touched me. In Acts chapter 17 verse 31. The book of Acts chapter 17 verse 31 it says, Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained, he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. He's saying, Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man, that is Jesus, whom he has ordained, he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. So it's like, guys, I told you that he will come and die. And I will resurrect him. So can you see my power has resurrected him now? So that means every other thing I told you will be done. If God says, you know, four things and the first one is done, you can be sure that the last three are as good as done. Because he has given all you the sample of his person. He has given you a sample of his integrity. So we're still we're still examining, you know, just a few of the prophecies because there are so many. But these ones are just some of the prophecies concerning his second coming. Concerning his second coming. Because the way I'm listening to some preachers right now, I won't be surprised if some of them come out and preach that maybe Jesus is not even coming back again. Sir. I won't be surprised because I've heard so much heresies. It's unbelievable. What is just being preached all over the place? I mean, please forgive me. Oh, thank God for those who are doing their best. I'm just talking about some of these few charlatans that are just causing trouble for everyone. So we have to be ready. You know, the prophecies are meant to, when a prophecy is given, it's usually about something that will happen in the future. 
but something that you can influence in the present. Something that's going to happen in the future, but you can influence in the present. So, for example, people think that, oh, if they prophesy to you that you are going to be rich, and no matter what, you'll be rich. I have news for you, not really. Oh. Prophecy comes to give you an idea of what is possible. Your response to that prophecy, your response to everything you need to do to be right with God, your response we now determine the outcome of that prophecy. So, for example, if they say uh, you are going to be rich, and then you just sit down in your house and waiting for people to go bring a wheelbarrow of money to you, that person is going the wrong direction. Just for me to put it mildly, that person is going in the wrong direction. There is still a part for us to play on every prophecy. If you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, you still have to do the thing. If you are not married, waiting for immaculate conception, still has to do the thing. So, if you are trusting God for healing, you still have to take steps of faith. You still have to believe this with your heart. You still have to act like you believe it. So same thing that without a shadow of a doubt, we have been we, we have been given all these prophecies that has made it abundantly clear to us that Jesus is coming back. The question I'm posing to everybody listening to me is, so what are you going to do about it? You Now, the Bible has given you a prophecy that Jesus is coming back again. What are you going to do? I pray for my heart that somebody will make the right decisions for them to know that they should be ready for the second coming of our king, that they must be ready. It doesn't mean you won't make mistakes, it doesn't mean you won't fall down, but quickly get back up, dust yourself, keep going, hallelujah, glory to God. So we have just been looking at our month of Jesus is coming and we started last week by examining what has been bothering everybody, which is how come is taking so long now. We're able to explain that our own time is different from God's timing. And this week, we're looking at just a few of the prophecies that prophesy that Jesus is coming back again. So we're not talking about old prophecies in the Old Testament or about individuals that have come and gone. No, it's telling us about in the future. So we need to do our best to make sure that we do not miss it to make sure that we do not miss it. We need to absolutely do everything we can. Amen. I hope you have been blessed by this. You know, throughout this uh, particular theme, I can't help but make sure that I give people the opportunity to give their life to Christ. Look, you are on the radio. Maybe you are in your room. Maybe you are just by yourself. You have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to come to Jesus. Once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to come to Jesus. And I want you to just Take that step with me. It, number one is either you've never taken it before because you have your own ideas about things. Or number two, you may have said it before but you believe you have backsliding or you are not even sure where you are with things. If you are not sure that if the trumpet sounds today, you'll be going with Jesus, then please, I invite you to say these prayers with me and to mean it from your heart. Father Lord, I have sinned against you. I ask for forgiveness of my sins. Wash me clean with the blood of Jesus. I make Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life. I surrender my life to him. Now I'm a new creature. Now I'm a new person. All things have gone away. All things have become new. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. If you've said that sincerely from your heart, if you meant every word of it, then congratulations. Now you are born again. I want you to know that you need to find a Bible teaching church, a Bible believing church so that you can be trained, you can be taught, you can be discipled so that you can become mature. Because if somebody is, is a 60 year old baby, something must be wrong because they are, they are supposed to have evolved to a different level. So if you are just starting today, then you need help so that you can become more mature. You need the help of people that have gone ahead of you or people who have been equipped with a gift to help. So you want to subscribe to those people. You want to subscribe to them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can still reach us on 0909-526-0406. And you can still text us. You can still send messages. You can still ask how you can give to this uh, program or how you can be a blessing to our ministry. Just to ask a question or for clarification, whatever it is you want to do, that's fine. You're always free to do that. And you can also send us an email at info at flamingsouthafrica.org. Info, I-N-F-O, at flamingsouthafrica.org. And we'll do our best to get back to you as well. I hope and sincerely hope that you have been blessed 
next week, like I said, uh, we are going to have to match together two of the subtopics that I mentioned. So we'll be looking at why should they come back and we'll match that with signs of the end. So it's going to be one, just one single sermon. Why should Jesus come back? What are the signs of his second coming? So that, you know, we may really be on the cutting edge and we may be you know, waiting and be ready for him when he comes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just want to thank those who have been faithful. Those who have been faithful listening to this program. I'm always very encouraged when I get a WhatsApp or a text message or a phone call or an email from you guys. I'm always very impressed. God bless you. So we, if you want to hear any of this, you can go to my channel on YouTube, Rev M A Daniel. R E V M A D A N I E L. Rev M A Daniel. One word. That's my YouTube channel. You see the MP4 of this radio program. It's not recorded with video in terms of me capturing me, but at least you can listen to a version of what we have just discussed. So you want to go into YouTube and subscribe to my channel, Rev M.A. Daniel, and you'll be richly blessed. So if you're looking for a local church, you've got a local church here in Adoikiti, God City, Adoikiti, opposite Mojere Market. And uh, we have two services. So the first service starts at 8 and the second one starts at 10.45. Uh, we've got our pastors here. That will be a blessing to you. So just go there and you'll be, you'll be richly blessed. So until I come your way next week again, I'm your brother Reverend Matthew Akinde Daniel saying thank you for listening and bye for now. Release your presence, oh God. I know you have been blessed by this message. Reverend Matthew is a prophet and an apostle of God. Connect with us in this ministry. Your life will experience a transformation. You can partner with us by giving as you are led by God. To call, text, or WhatsApp us, the number is 0909-526-0406. Again, the number is 0909 Five two six zero four zero six. You can email us on info at flaming sword africa dot org. That is info at flaming sword africa dot org. Our website is www dot flaming sword africa dot org. Again, that is www dot flaming sword africa dot org. God bless you.